In order to perform a Slack to Teams migration using Avpoint Fly, log on to the Fly interface and over on the left, click Migration Connector. Connectors work for source and destination in your migrations. So in order to go over to Migration and set up a migration plan from Slack to Teams, I must first start by building these connectors. I already have my Teams migration connector set up, which is done by clicking on Tenant and clicking Add and filling in the appropriate info. But I don't have a Slack connector yet. So with Slack selected, I'll click Add. It asks you to provide a name for the connection and then the client ID and client secret. These values come from a Slack app, which you create and then essentially distribute or make available to the workspace or workspaces that you want to migrate from. To do that, we have to go over to Slack and set that app up first. To get started, log on to api.slack.com apps. You can see I already have one app in here that I previously configured as a test. To create the app that you're going to use for your Slack migration, on this page, at the top right, click Create New App. Give the app a name, and then select the Slack workspace where you're going to develop it. I'm going to select my Slack workspace that I'll actually be migrating from. Then we click Create App. Once the app is created, on the Basic Information tab, you can scroll down, and here you can see the client ID and the client secret. If you would like to see it in real text, you can click the Show button. Now you might think at this point, that's all I need to do. Copy this and this, go over into Fly and Paste. But in fact, just creating the app is not enough. We also have to enable the ability for Fly to connect to the app, and set up all the permissions that the app will have to be able to access your Slack content and then do the migration. For that, we scroll back up and over on the left, we start with OAuth and permissions. The first thing we need to do is to add a redirect URL. The redirect URL will push back to fly after it has attempted to authorize against the app itself. So you really won't see whether or not this works until you go back into Fly and try to do the connection. I'm going to click Add New Redirect URL. Please note, there is information in your Fly user guide that specifies exactly how to do this. You can see here in the guide under Step 7 for setting up a Slack connection. It explains everything you need to do including potentially putting local into the URL. The reason why you have to include local is if you're running Fly on a local machine, like I'm doing here. I'm running this on my Surface. If it's not a public-facing, an internet-facing URL that you're connecting from, well, how would it know how to redirect back? You have to tell it that it is a local address. Back over in Slack. I have to now fill in that redirect address. So in this case, I'm using the host name rather than my IP address, but the IP address would also work here. You can tell if it's an acceptable URL to the system if your add button is lit up. If this is grayed out, check your URL format. I'll click add. This URL will also become important later on when you access fly. The .local must be used when you connect to Fly, otherwise the redirect will not work. Once I have my redirect URL in place, we scroll down under Scopes. Scopes is where you're going to essentially set all of the authorized permissions. Once again, your Avpoint user guide has all the information that you need here on the various things that you need to add under those OAuth scopes. To do that, we go back into Slack. We click Add an OAuth Scope. And now we scroll through the list until we add everything that was pictured in your user guide. You do that by clicking them one at a time.
Once you've added all the bot token scopes, scroll down under user token scopes and add two more. The ones you're going to need are users read and users read email. Once you've added all the scopes, the last step is to scroll back up towards the top and make sure that your workspaces have access to the app. To do that, we go to Manage Distribution. In Manage Distribution, scroll down towards the bottom under Share Your App with Other Workspaces, expand Remove Hard-Coded Information, check off I've reviewed and removed any hard-coded information, and then click Activate Public Distribution. Once that is complete, you can go back to the basic information page and scroll down where you can again see the client ID and the client secret. Copy the client ID, return to Fly or open Fly, and again be sure to connect and log into Fly using the correct URL. If I was not logged on with this dot local, what I'm about to try here would fail every time. I will click Add, give the connection a name, paste in the client ID, return back to Slack, show the client secret, and then copy it. Once again, return to Fly and paste. Down at the bottom, click Authorize. We see that the app is requesting permission to access my workspace. I'm going to click Allow. And I have now been redirected back to Fly with that connection in place and working. Now that I have both my Slack and Teams connections created, I can go over to the Migration tab and set up and run my migration plan. Thanks for watching this short video on how to create a Slack connection in AvPointFly.